If you wanted, you could use this new heresy box to give you an entire 2,000 point Space Marine army for Warhammer 40k. Not exactly a very strong one, but could it be a good place to start? Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where this new Age of Darkness heresy box is going to be coming out in the near future. Games Workshop have been showing us tons of previews of all the new models in it over the past few weeks, and when we talked about the full contents the other week, I got a few suggestions, including on Discord, for whether it might be possible to make a video going over the box set's contents for 40k. It really is quite rare that Games Workshop lets you get away with buying an entire 2,000 point army for under £200 or $300, so if you wanted to jump into Space Marines or Warhammer in general fairly quickly and cheaply, then this one certainly isn't the worst option. Just while we're on the subject of the Heresy Box, I will just briefly mention that it is the subject of the channel's June giveaway, and at time of releasing this that'll be in 4 days time. Each month on the channel I do give away some really big Warhammer kits. The June one's going to be for 2 copies of this enormous Age of Darkness box with all the miniatures pictures, and if you'd like to be entered in the draw for it, there's two equal ways of doing so. First up, you can support the channel on Patreon for any amount. The channel's Patreon page is what allows me to keep on making all specs tactics videos quite so regularly, so if you are enjoying a lot, any support is enormously appreciated. Plus I run similar giveaways to this every single month. If you're interested, then the Patreon link is down in the video description. Otherwise, you can also enter for free by supporting on social media, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like the Facebook page, and then to enter the draw, a post appears on the 1st of June. You enter by posting a photo of a 40k miniature or any other imagery, as well as your name and the date there in the same image, the last bit just to see some cool miniatures and to stop Facebook bots from spamming. I then put all the entries together, Patreon and Facebook, do the draw with a random number generator, and announce the results on the channel update post on the 4th of each month. Obviously they haven't officially announced the release date of this yet, I'll post them on to the winners just as soon as I receive them, which hopefully shouldn't be too long after we actually do the draw. As I mentioned, there's similar giveaways to this each month, and the links to the Patreon and the Facebook page are down in the video description. In any case, moving back onto the box itself, we did a bit of a breakdown of the contents last week, but it's quite a good deal on paper. Two Legion Praetors, 40 Mark VI Space Marines with the Power Armor, 10 Cataphractor Terminators, 1 Contempt to Dreadnought and a Spartan, plus the really big Horus Heresy Age of Darkness rulebook, and roughly if you price them all together at current Games Workshop prices, I'd estimate that they'd usually sell these things separately for $650 odd dollars, around £390 or €510. Euros. The final figure might be a bit more or less than this, but it adds up to around about a 55% saving, which is far far better than Games Workshop's normal discounts, they usually knock something like 30-40% to off their combat patrol boxes for example. If we're thinking about using it for 40k, as we've already seen, it's basically a 2000 point army in one box, you could use it in both gaming systems if you wanted, and if you had your main interest in 40k and not heresy, you could always think about selling off that big rulebook as well. I'm sure there'll be plenty of people interested in getting into heresy who won't be picking up this big box. So let's move through the individual contents of the box, and a few thoughts as to how you might field them in 40k. In general, you'd be looking to field them either as Loyalist Space Marines or Chaos Space Marines, and I feel like the Heresy Era armour could really lend to both. Chaos are known for being just a little bit stuck in time and often having old armour marks amongst their ranks. First up, we have the two characters, the Legion Praetors, which you could proxy as Captains or Chaos Lords. One's got an enormous axe and one has a power sword. I feel that for Space Marine Captains, you could use them as a Captain with a Relic Blade, that's the one that's Strength 7, AP-3 and Damage 2. The Imperial Fist one on the right has a Volkite Pistol, not a choice that you can get in 40k, but I guess you could think about just doing a simple hand swap to give him something like a Plasma Pistol or a Bolt Pistol, or perhaps you could even give him an extra converted shield, and perhaps run him as the Primaris Pattern Lieutenant with a shield, near Volkite Pistol and Power Sword. Obviously it's not actually a Primaris model, but I feel that if you glued a Storm Shield onto him, then that one would make a pretty decent job of representing him rules-wise. In any case, you could certainly think about head swaps or weapon swaps for these guys if you wanted to give them a bit of a different feel. I feel if you wanted to make them Chaos Lords, then head swaps might be quite nice, that could add a lot of character. Though I feel that the Imperial Fist one's probably going to be easier to swap things around from a weapons point of view. The Sons of Horus one might just be a bit awkward as he's carrying that axe in two hands. If you're playing Chaos, another option for the guy on the left could be to use him as a Master of Executions. I feel like that enormous axe is big enough to fit the bill. 
Next up, we've got the massive amount of Mark VI Space Marines, perhaps the single most dominating thing of the box. 40 of these really is a huge number, and you're not really going to want for either Tactical Marines or Chaos Legionaries again. I must say that if you were just thinking about fielding this box as an entire 2,000 point army, I feel that these are going pretty heavily on the excessive side for troops. In 40k and strong lists, they sort of incentivize you to take a few troops, but not absolutely loads, as they don't tend to be very good damage dealers. Certainly not to say though that they don't look pretty awesome or ranked up. For Space Marines, you'd be looking at fielding these as Tactical Marines, I think. Cheap objective holders, and you could maybe think about kitbashing them with other spare parts to get some heavy or special weapons. I think in particular, it could be interesting to pick up a box of Devastators alongside these, and that could allow you to make really quite a lot of heavy weapon armed Space Marines. You could probably achieve similar by getting those Legion heavy weapon upgrade packs that Games Workshop has teased, but we don't know when they're coming out yet. On the Chaos side, I guess they could be standing in for standard Chaos Space Marines, soon to be known as Legionaries. If you needed a sheer mass amount of bodies, then these wouldn't be looking too bad. Though with the Chaos Codex not too far away, we don't know how strong the Legionaries are going to be in the new book, and whether or not it's going to make more sense to arm them with Bolt Pistol and Chainsword or Bolters. Though now we know they're getting 3 attacks, it does make me think that the combat upgrades might be a bit better. I feel that maybe their appearance isn't amazing for Chaos Space Marines, I guess they do have Heresy Era armour, so it's perfectly possible that they could have these all the way going up to modern 40k, but I do feel that people associate the Beaky Helmets a fair bit more with Loyalists. You just don't really see all that many modern era Chaos Marines with the Beaky Helms in current 40k, though I suppose there's always the option of head swaps if desired. Again, they will be missing a fair amount of upgrades from the standard Chaos Space Marine kit, and if you wanted other war gear options, you might need to do a fair bit of kit bashing or conversion. Otherwise, flipping back to standard Space Marines, I guess you could perhaps use them as counts as intercessors. They definitely are firstborn in appearance, but seeing as they're really quite uniform and a little bit bigger and chunkier than standard firstborn, I personally wouldn't have any problem playing against them as such myself. They are just basic dudes with bolters after all. I feel that getting better attacks and extra bolt guns do actually make them a little bit more tempting to spam on mass. It means that they're actually a bit more capable in combat as a battle line. And if you count those bolters as those auto bolt rifles, it means that a squad of 10 of them actually will be spitting out a serious amount of strength for AP nothing firepower, but really not that many points more than a tactical marine. I kind of feel that at least in casual games you could fairly easily get away with that. It's not likely to cause too much confusion on the table if you just say that every single bolter armed marine is counting as an intercessor. Next up we have the terminators. These guys are the same as the current kit of cataphracti terminators. You get 10 of them in the box, and it's fairly good news to have them included as Terminators recently got a very big boost indeed from Armour of Contempt. What's even nicer is that I think that the Relic Terminators are some of the best options that you can field. Both the Combi Bolter and Lightning Claw and the Combi Bolter and Chain Fist combos are very nice at the moment. A nice bit of mid-range anti-infantry fire, backed up with solid melee in a unit that's generally going to be powerful enough to be worth putting buffs on. For Dark Angels in particular, Relic Terminators are absolutely top tier competitive. Deathwing mean that they're only wounded on fours, so are ridiculously tough, never mind all the other synergies that they can have with them. And I think that a fair few other chapters can have decent success with big blocks of Terminators, say Black Templars with their 5 plus feel no pain and Relic Bearers, or White Scars allowing them to advance and charge and get them into combat a bit better, maybe with plus one damage. For Terminators, they can be seriously cheap to field, 170 points for just a basic unit of 5 with Lightning Claws and Combi Bolters, and even a few of their squad upgrades can be well worth including. I think that the Reaper Auto Cannon and Grenade Launchers are fairly decent upgrades for the 5 points each. I also quite like the way that the Sergeant can take a Chain Fist as well. It's kind of annoying that the standard Terminator Sergeant is locked to a Power Sword, as really you want the fancy model with the most attacks hitting with the most powerful weapon. On the Chaos side, again the Terminator rules are likely to be changing quite a bit in the new book. I would say that currently Chaos Terminators are one of the stronger unit picks with Lightning Claws and Combi Bolters. They still only have 2 wounds, but they are pretty threatening for 28 points per model. They're fairly popular in Emperor's Children, where you can near enough guarantee a charge from Deep Strike, or perhaps World Eaters, where you can upgrade them to Red Butchers and get them fighting twice. It's kind of hard to imagine that they won't be a very decent unit for Chaos Marines when their new book drops. For Death Guard and Thousand Sons, Terminators are absolute linchpins of their army, and it seems very likely that they're going to be one of the best units for receiving big buffs and things from the various Chaos support characters when the new book comes out. Next up we have the Contempt of Dreadnought. 
The Forge World data sheet for these has been really quite popular to run in strong lists. It's a strong damage dealer with the core keyword for things like Space Marines, Death Guard, or Thousand Sons. In the Forge World data sheet, he costs 140 points plus one command point for the relic thing. And then you've got a very solid little core unit that either can be used as a pure gunline threat or go mixed roll with a primary ranged weapon and the Dreadnought close combat weapon. It seems that the one from the big box has the option of a Havoc launcher as a top mounted weapon, which doesn't really look too dissimilar to a Cyclo missile launcher to me. I feel like it would be pretty acceptable to run it as that in current games of 40k, particularly as it can't take a Havoc launcher as an option right now. At time of recording we still haven't seen full details of the kit, but it does appear that the ranged options might be a little bit limited. I think the idea on this one is that you use the Dreadnought close combat weapon and then combine it with a ranged weapon in the other arm, appearing to be las cannons, auto cannons, morty melters or heavy bolters. If it's anything like the last contemptor though, it should be fairly easy to magnetise in and out options, or just do a little bit of chopping and gluing. And if you did want to obtain a few extra parts to make a double range dreadnought, I'm sure you could either convert or buy some more plastic parts, or use 3D printing for some proxy weapons. In game at the moment, I think perhaps the best options for this guy are still the twin Volkite Culverins, or maybe the twin Las Cannons. Depends if you want something a bit more general purpose or tailored to killing tanks. Out of the options in this kit, I guess you could go Last Cannon and Multi Melter. It would be a bit frustrating to have the two different ranges on the same model, but that would still seem like a pretty reasonable alternative. If going for a more of a mixed build, maybe you could think about Twin Last Cannons, a melee weapon, and the Cyclo missiles. That would be 190 points. Not bad as a midfield core gun turret, it can also pack some pretty massive counter charge threat if the enemy gets too close. Maybe it's competing a little bit too much with the Redemptor Dreadnought for the Loyalists but seems pretty solid for Chaos, and if you do happen to be a Loyalist and you're playing Iron Hands, the Relic Contemptor still remains one of the very best choices you can bring, as you can make it a character and give it protection from Lookout Sir. It makes it into a really annoying threat where it can fire heavy firepower at you and not be removed in return. Finally, and the biggest baddest kit in the box, we have the Spartan Tank, a Lord of War at 460 points. Its rules are in the Imperial Armour Compendium, and I must admit I do think it's a bit over-costed for what you get. For 460 points, it's both fairly fragile, at 20 wounds, toughness 8, and a 2 plus save. Though I suppose Armour of Contempt has actually meaningfully helped out a bit on that, it'll usually be getting one pip better save than it normally would. Damage-wise, though, it's also not particularly impressive. 8 last cannons and a couple of heavy bolters just aren't really all that good for the big points cost. It also has issues being a Lord of War as well. You'll need to spend one command point for the detachment, and a further command point for for it being a relic datasheet, and has a few other issues with being titanic as well, such as interacting more poorly with terrain. I guess at least unlike land raiders, it's not going to have its firepower shot down by just being tagged by some chaff in combat, but I'm not really convinced that that's really going to be enough to justify it. Perhaps the biggest advantages of this thing are just being a really big tough unit to super load of buffs onto. If you're running loyalist, then iron hands might well be the way to go. Put psychic powers on it for plus one to hits or better durability and probably use the Ironstone for a minus one damage, so that way at least it becomes halfway tough. For Chaos, most of their powers and stratagems don't have anything to stop you targeting really big vehicles like this, but in reality, I don't really think it's going to be in your best interest to plow this all into a Spartan, say compared with something like a Corn Lord of Skulls. In game, it'd likely want to trundle its way towards the midfield, maybe use itself for a battlefield bunker that can carry a bunch of things like Terminators or other close-range infantry. And kind of interestingly, it can carry jump infantry as well, so it could even be a weird way to deliver things like Vanguard Veterans or Warp Talons. I guess in theory you could use it as just a basic land raider as well. It basically is a land raider just with an extended carapace at the front. And you could either proxy or actually do some modelling work and take the assault ramp a bit further back. You would need to remove some last cannons at the side though. I feel that on balance, the standard land raider probably is stronger than the Spartan, though it's by no means a particularly big staple of the Space Marine Armoury right now. I guess it might just feel a little bit less of a drag on the list to feel just as a Land Raider though, as it's around about 200 points cheaper. So putting it all together you'd come out with this, at least for standard Space Marines it'd be just shy of 2000 points, obviously depending a bit on what gear you gave the squads and vehicles. I'd basically see it as a way that you could very very cheaply get into Warhammer or Space Marines. It certainly doesn't really give you a competitive list, but we get you a very big space marine force on the table really quite quickly, and potentially for very cheaply indeed, if it really is £180, 
then maybe you can get it a bit cheaper from a discount retailer and sell off the Horus Heresy big rule book as well to have yet more savings. And between all that, I think you've got one of the cheapest ways that Games Workshop's ever released of getting to a 2000 point army, and one that's got some fairly fun, cool and new miniatures in. I'd say the biggest weaknesses of the army on the tabletop are that there's just absolutely tons of tactical marines which won't do a whole load of damage, and the Spartan just isn't really all that efficient for the points. I think the Dreadnought Terminators and characters though are all fairly usable. Anyway though, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. I'll be really interested to hear your takes on it if you are thinking about picking up the box and adapting it for 40k. Finally, I'll just finish up by mentioning the giveaway for these boxes again. If you'd like to be entered to win one of these, then check out the links in the video description. There's the Patreon page where you can support for any amount a month. You get entered for prize giveaways each month, and it allows me to keep the videos on this channel coming quite so regularly. And there's the Facebook page where the post to enter will appear at the very start of June. Feel free to check out both of those if you're interested. In any case, an absolutely enormous thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.